outdoors Jeremy here and it is a brisk 20 degrees today we're going to be splitting some wood got the wood burner fired up got plenty of wood to burn but you always got to maintain wood and he's got to keep it split but I've been trying to find some videos and I have Fiskars, I've used it a little bit. Um, when I used to have a Fiskars axe, and we split wood with it for a winter, and it worked. It worked out really well. Could not break the handle. It held true. Um, ended up losing it years ago now, but I always wanted another one, and I found this, and I think it is the Super Splitter. I don't know. There's no thing on here. I've seen stuff like X27, X25, but there's nothing on the handle, so I think it's just the super splitter. So it's got the real nice wedge. Works out. I've used it some and I like it. Um, it works. It works out really well. And I also have with me uh, the splitting mall axe. So it's uh, this is the true trooper or true temper? I don't know picked it up at Lowe's. Uh, this this head actually used to be on a fiberglass handle. I used it so much that I broke the epoxy resin in there and the head came off and um, I returned it at five year warranty. Um, I couldn't find the head when I returned it. So I, I've got a, a spare one, brand new fiberglass handle and they're nice, I just, you get a lot of vibration in the handle, and I prefer wooden, as you can see. Real nice and chewed up there from all those miss strikes that I've made. Um, would like to get a metal guard on there, that'd be nice. But, handles are extremely cheap. Just buy, you know, American Hickory, man, you're good to go. But, so I'll be using both of these today. I've got a couple different styles that I like to use for different types of wood. I also have the sledgehammer and a wedge, but uh, that's for the real tough stuff, if I need to do that, um, and normally that's when I'm hitting wood and this thing is just, it's not its not cutting it, the wood's, the round's too big, or it's got too many knots, and who I am cold, I am starting to shake, um, so I'm going to split a couple pieces with each one of these, try a different, a couple styles that I like to do, and uh, um, let's kind of go from there, so. Let's get to it. Ooh. Oh man, I gotta get moving anyways. It's uh, so I can get back to the house. Try to find some good ones that will So this wood has actually sat out since this spring, I don't know when it was cut. It might have been cut during that time. It might have sat in that, but it's it's very well seasoned, as you can tell. It's splitting everywhere, and this wood can be also problematic to split because of these big, large chunks. But we're going to knock them off first and go from there. And I'm going to use the Fiskars for that. Let's see if I might be able to. So, what I do, I don't really do too much of this checking, I just, you know, after you do it for so long, and I'm kind of set up, I've got a driveway line here, and all my chocolate blocks, so I know where I need to stand. So, 
That's one way that I like to do it is I'll come way up overhead directly down and I try to hit on the edge of the piece I'm wanting to split. Oh, man, you're tough. No coat, no jacket. It's fucking cold, babe. I'm not, I'm talking to the camera, dipshit. Yeah. spider ain't gonna make it. See sometimes with these two they won't split real good like that. Nice little trick is to split them in half this way. Just take it, throw it in the pile. One thing I'm probably gonna try to do is I'm gonna get the chain with the bungee cord. It's just in my setup right here right now. That'll work good when I cut the wood. So it can be cut to the right length, everything's all even, instead of, you know, you're getting this everywhere. Whew. Okay, so there's that style. Now I have also seen this style, where you come here, directly overhead, and you're going to raw. I don't really like that, because I feel like you get more momentum with the windmill coming down than you do with trying to jackhammer it in. But we'll do it a couple times with this one and we'll do it on the next one. It works, but I get a lot of vibration in the back of this handle from that. Oops, did it the wrong way. I can feel my beard freezing up. Now, what we will do with this, chop that right off. There, okay. So we're gonna turn it this way now. We're gonna pull out the splitting axe maul. I think these are both relatively close to the same weight. I think this is like a four and a half pounder. I think that's a four, four and a half pounder too. Um, ooh. Yeah, it's the reflex getting me. But, so we're going to go with this one now. Um, I'd like to switch out to this one though when I get to something that's really sticky. Like it's just starting to get sticky in here. Um, we'll do the, that little jackhammer in there as a overhead. those short strokes, depending on the size of wood, you can have a lot of power in those coming from here. I could probably even split that one down further, even though I don't need to. Now we're going to windmill it. So it took what? About three strikes with the over the top. So on the windmills, I don't like to stand with the horse. So I like to get a good step back because I'm going to come through and drive this down in there, dropping my weight as I do the same principles if you want to hit somebody. I'm not trying to split the wood. I'm trying to drive this head through the wood stick it into that. That's the goal. That feels really good when you get those one hit splits. It's great. Same principle when you hit somebody. You don't advocate it, but you're not trying to hit the person. You're trying to punch through up. You want to twist that weight into it. And you just you want to picture your fist going through the back of their head. They're gonna hit a lot harder. Same principle applies here.
much harder, more powerful hit. That one doesn't count. And yes, yeah, so that one's chewed. Okay. Um, I gotta find something here. Oh, this looks like a good one. Here. This. Oh no, what is this? I'm seeing two hearts. And it looks like I tried to work on this before with little to no avail. So we'll give it a shot today. We'll see if I have the strength to do it. Mind you, I've just got off of midnight. So a little tired. Did just drink me a pot of coffee, so I'm real awake. I do see is I got a nice fissure running here. I'm gonna just turn that just a smidge. There it is. And for Schniggles. It's shits and giggles, hopefully. Let me do this one. This is the first time I've actually done this. I have never broken a head. Wow. Huh. Bummer. I really liked this handle. Well, this is why you always have backups. I won't break this handle. I'll put that back up there. That's a hard piece of wood. Oh no, I 
missed. I missed it. As you can see, a lot of knots. So we'll come from this side. Get it right there. There it is. When in doubt, flip it over and turn it around. That's what I said to my wife. No, not really. Oh. Alright, that was a poor shot I missed. This one's good. That's uh, that's pretty much life out here at the house during the winter. Splitting wood, trying to stay warm, and uh, I'm gonna have to rewatch that. Man, that's so odd. Oh, now I have to figure out how to get this head out. I guess I could burn it. Maybe that might work. Well, I do have a fire going, but I don't want to superheat the steel because then I'll probably weaken it. Bummer. That sucks. All right. Well, guys, Muddy Boots signing off for today. I guess they're not really muddy. It'd be uh, more snowy boots, but, you know, premise sticks. Fail. Stay warm.